Hi guys, it's Becky. And I just got notification that my next magical mystery bead box from Jesse James Beads is going to be delivered Monday. So let's do some piratey stuff with this month's uh, pirate themed box. I already made some earrings with uh, some of the parrots that came in this box, um, but I wanna make a necklace using the other parrots and some of these really cool and super shiny leaf and flower connectors. So I'm going to lay all this out and uh, figure out what, uh, what I'm gonna do with it. I am definitely, definitely going to be using some of this chain. It is some Jolly Roger chain. And uh, this blingy clasp. I'm gonna string it so that it clasps in the front so it's not hiding behind my hair when I'm wearing it. And um, yeah, I'm gonna pull out what I'm working with. Um, I already kind of planned this out. So I'm gonna pull it all out, lay it out on the mat and show you what it's kind of supposed to look like. And then I, I will show you how I'm going to connect it and we'll go through some of the, uh, the actual building out of it. But while I'm doing that, I wanted to tell you that I got this box and I was like, this was designed specifically for me because it's got gorgeous colors that I love. But also, like about 20 years ago when I was at work, this guy that I worked with, he handed me this book. Like it's, it was a teeny little book, but it was about women pirates. And I don't know what vibe I was given off at the time, but apparently it was, I like to learn about lady pirates because he was right. When he said, I think you'll like this book, he was absolutely right. I loved it. And um, so welcome to Pirate Facts with Becky. <laughs> and get, get ready for that. So we're going to pull out these. Um, sorry, I, I sort of went through this. There are these really cool like coin beads with, uh, with all of that. These are going to be part of it. We're going to use the leaves. We're going to use the flowers. We're going to use these like cage bead connectors. Um, we're going to use our little parrots. We're going to use the uh, the Jolly Roger um, stuff. And let me think. Oh, and uh, for, for these connectors, I am going to be using, I'm, I'm making links so that I can link them together as a a chain and they're just little beaded links with these tiny tiny uh, beads that came in the bead box so um, I've already made the links for half of it I'm gonna show you how with the other ones um, that way you don't have to watch me make all of these little teeny links because that would be really really um, what's the word you know tedious that's it so instead of being tedious, it's going to be educational. And we are going to talk about lady pirates because it was something that you didn't have a lot of that in history. Um, you didn't have things that said, oh, hey, yeah, all of these women lived on these ships with these men and they did all of these piratey things. It wasn't something that you learn about in school or anywhere. So... It's fun to find out about. And you know, some of the the actual historical pirates have been the basis for some fictional things. Like in the the Pirates of the Caribbean movies and even in uh the Our Flag Means Death. You've got a lot of these things that were based on actual like historical people who lived um and honestly, the only lady pirates that we really, really know about are the ones who were caught or the ones who were so notorious that they were written about in history. There are probably hundreds and hundreds of people who were assigned female at birth who lived and dressed as men on board these pirate ships and they went unnoticed and nobody knew or cared. And so they just lived their lives doing swashbuckling and robbing from the rich and the drug smugglers and the people, uh, human tra transporters and 
all of those types of folks. All right, yeah, I'm gonna want that like that. Okay, so I think this is gonna be the basis of the bottom of our necklace. And then I'm going to want some of this chain across the middle of it. This is still on the front. And then from the middle of this chain, I think I want to hang this pendant because everyone knows cats are terrifying. They're basically witches and they've got knives for fingers. So we're gonna hang it like that. And then I've got, oh, this came from my stash. It wasn't in the box. Everything else came in the box. These also were from my stash. I'm gonna have little rings as the connectors here. And then above the rings, right here on the shoulders, I'm gonna have my little parrots, parrots on my shoulders. And then I think I'm going to use the clasp as a closure here, just as an asymmetric closure. And I'm gonna be cutting this chain because it's not all going to be around the top, around the back. So I think that's how we're gonna lay it out. That's how we're gonna have it. So let me move this chain out of the way. We will get to that in a bit. We will do some wire wrapping with our birds in a bit. And I'm going to show you how I make my, um, my wire wrapped loop connectors. And I'm going to connect this first part of the thing. So let's talk about lady pirates, right? So I guess like the definition of piracy is going to be someone who uses ships to rob people. Um, you could classify Vikings as pirates since they used their long ships and they rode around and they plundered um, using all those to, uh, to get that. There were actually some records kept that somebody had written. Uh, they transcribed oral records of the Vikings and some of their famous people. Like there was this, somebody named Lagerta or Lagerda in Denmark, like ancient Denmark, who was a shield maiden. Like basically, you know, the, the Vikings show, um, Lagerda was kind of based on that, the character. Um, but the actual like real life Lagerda, she had her husband uh, was kidnapped and held for ransom. And so she ran, led a raiding party to, to, uh, to rescue him. And when she got there, she had a knife like that she had in her, her clothes when she hugged him, she stabbed him and killed him. And she was like, yeah, my life is better without you in it. And <laughs> she just like, she took over this whole thing. She was like the boss of this. And that's part of one of the things with like the, the pirate women is it was a way for women who may not have had power to claim power and to seize power, um, to be able to, to do those things with, uh, with their things. Um, Okay, anyway, so let's let's get to, to actually making jewelry while we're here. Um, I'm going to be making my links with 22 gauge wire. You can use thicker wire to make links, but these beads are so small that something thicker like 20 gauge or 18 gauge would probably not fit in this hole. So, <laughs> so I am using 22 gauge because it works perfectly and I'm using uh, wrapped loops and not simple loops on these because it is a soft all right and i'm just getting about a thumb's length just measuring on my thumb of wire for each of my links that i'm creating and wait where's my i need a bead for this all right there's my bead it's very small you can't see it but then on this, about partway in the middle of this, I'm going to take my, I just had it. These are my tools, by the way. I'm going to use round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, 
flush cutters. And that's what I'm gonna be using for my wire working. So my round nose pliers, I'm gonna bend it back and then pull it around the front, then rotate and bring it all the way around. So it makes a little loop like that. And when I've made that loop, on that side, I'm gonna put my bead in the middle of it. And I'm gonna make a loop on the other side too. So I've got my uh, end pointing towards me. I'm gonna bend this back that way, pull the wire all the way around, rotate my, my chain nose pliers so I can bring it all the way around this way. So both of the wires are going in sort of opposite directions. I just feel like that makes the link a little bit stronger than if they're going in the same directions. Um, but that's how I start the wire wrap loops. And this is the part that I always, always forget is I'll start wrapping them before I link something to them. I do this every time. Like some of you have watched me doing this and you've yelled at the screen and you've been like, don't forget to do the thing. And I always forget to do the thing. So I'm not gonna forget to do the thing this time. Um, where do I need a loop? Uh-huh, okay, so I've got my my beautiful Monstera leaf. It's like shiny on one side. I mean, it's shiny on both sides, but it's got the green on this side. So what I want to do is see how it's it's pretty snug up here. I want to open this up a little bit, sort of the same way you would open up uh, like a jump ring, where you open it up to the side to to give it some space there, and then slide the thing that you want attached to the loop onto the loop, and then once the loop is on there, you can squeeze it shut like that, and then start wrapping. Bloop, 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 bloop. And this is gonna be real fiddly, and I'm not going to do all of these on camera because that's that would be tiring. Anyway, so Lagarda was the first uh, one that I was really looking at for, for all that. I'm sure that there were other women on boats doing crimes before, um, all of that. There was also somebody in uh, the Mediterranean region in like ancient, ancient -y times, um, the area near Croatia. Uh, what was her name? Her name was, um, I can't remember, but uh, she was a queen. And so she didn't actually do a lot of the sailing, but she had like most of her people basically making their living by stealing from other people and places in the Mediterranean, like the Greeks went to her and they were like, hey, can you stop your people from like pillaging and, and doing all this? And she's like, I'm not going to stop my people from doing that. And then she killed like the Greek emissaries who were sent to ask her to stop doing that, which was, you know, I guess that's that's the kind of person she was at that point. OK, so I've got this connected here. And then with this open link and loop on the end, that's how I'm going to connect it to the other bits in my uh, in my chain. So let's get this flower connected to this link here. I'm just going to loop this right on there. And then I'm going to wrap this. So somebody else who was a lady pirate was uh, Jeanne de Clisson. She was in like the 1300s. This is 80. Um, the French king murdered her husband. And so she was French. Um, she lived in Brittany, um, which is along the French coast, French and English coast. Um, and she was called the lioness of Brittany because after the French king killed her husband, she was like, all right, I'm going to take my three boats and I am going to attack everyone who is French. Like there were merchant vessels, there were passenger vessels, there were military targets. She raided um, castles and she had three ships and it was called the Black Fleet because they were painted black with red sails. And her 
boat, the one that she captained was called My Revenge. And she basically was like, if you're French, you are your fair game. What she would do is she would kill every single person on board, except for one person. She would always leave one witness, someone who could tell the tale. Um, because it was about like making sure that King Philip knew that he done fucked up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what it was all about for her and so that's what that's what she did Jean de Clisson um then you've got uh Saida de Harva she was uh somebody who is a uh, Tetuan it's a part of Morocco and she had a pirate ship that she would raid the Spanish and Portuguese on that, she was a confederate of Barbarossa, who was a Turkish pirate, a corsair in the uh, uh, the Eastern Mediterranean, and she handled most of the Western Mediterranean stuff. So they were friends there, and then she actually married a king, um, but instead of giving up her uh, her seat of power there in Morocco, that king left his his country and came to go live with her there. So you know. She was one of those, like, girl bosses. And I think when you study the history of that, that's what you find is that women claimed power through piracy. And it actually happened with uh, Elizabeth I, Queen Elizabeth I. Um, Spain was like, okay, we are not going to buy any more of this wool, which was the main export for England. And so like the British were just completely bankrupt um, at that point. And so she was like, all right, guys, you go out with your ships and you enrich England. And so it was, she legalized the piracy. She gave people like titles. Um, she if they if they pirated enough, they pirated hard enough um, in order for them to enrich England. And one of the most famous of hers was Lady Mallory Killigrew. She was the uh, Queen Elizabeth's sea dog. And she had been raised by a, a, a pirate, like her dad was a pirate. And then she married um, a guy who was a, a privateer for Queen Elizabeth, and he actually became the vice admiral of her fleet, and <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's crazy because like he was in charge of of uh, enforcing the law, but he only enforced it on uh, those who weren't raiding the Spanish and the Portuguese and the French, and then bringing those riches back to England. They're the ones who are keeping it for themselves. She turned a blind eye to a lot of the smuggling that, uh, Queen Elizabeth turned a blind eye to a lot of smuggling that Lady Mary Killigrew actually did um, within that time. But also during that time period, you had um, Irish pirates. So you had uh, like uh, Grace O'Malley. She was born on a ship. She had her son on a ship, um, but she was fighting the English at the same time. And so there were probably a lot of really cool naval battles that happened between uh, Grace O'Malley's ships and the English pirates that were doing that. I mean, that's what like King, um, the King of Spain, he called her the, uh, the pirate queen. Queen Elizabeth the first. She was the pirate queen. So let me get this. Created. And I'm going to do a closed loop on this one because I'm going to loop it onto this open loop over here. So I want a closed loop on one side and then an open loop on the other. And I'm probably going to forget all about the open loop when I get to it. So watch for that <laughs> when that happens. Now that I've said it, I won't. But maybe I will. You never know. All right. So one of the mixes that we had in here was actually named for, um, was it Anne Bonnie? I think it was Anne Bonnie. 
I can't remember. I don't have the paper anymore because it was it was a while ago that I opened this. But Anne Bonnie was she was also Irish, but she lived in England and then her dad took her across the sea to America and she lived in the Carolinas for a little while. And while she was there, she married a sailor named Jack Bonnie and she went out to sea with him. Okay, I'm leaving that open. Look, I remembered. <laughs> Good for me. So she went out to sea with him. And while she was there um, to sea with her Jack, she met another Jack, Calico Jack. And she eloped with him. She ran away with this pirate and left her uh, her husband. And she, <laughs> she snuck aboard dressed as a man. And then she was part of Calico Jack's crew. And while she was there, another woman pirate who were like, they were, they were on the same crew together was Mary Reed. And Mary Reed was really interesting. Like she was, and you know what? I'm not going to say she, because I can't speak for the dad. I don't know like if they were um, non-binary or not. I know the fact that they spent a lot of their life living as a man probably meant that they were less maybe gender fluid I don't know if they were trans you can't you can't say um because it's it's history and there's no way for me to ask them directly so I'm gonna stop re referring to them as a she and uh call them a they Mary Reed um her mom sorry I just said their mom <laughs> their mom dressed them as a boy in order to get uh inherit their dad their dad stuff when they died it wasn't a lot um, but it was enough for them to live off of. And then they continued to dress as a boy to join the British Army. And they were a member of the British Army when they met a Flemish soldier, soldier who knew their secret and married them. And then when he died... Uh, they were left destitute. So at that point, they boarded a ship. They went to the Caribbean and there they were boarded by pirates. Their ship was. And during the, I guess, pirate attack, they were like, hey, can I join your crew? They showed them what they could do with like a sword and all that. And they're like, yeah, you got some skills. Come on. So <laughs> living life. Uh, dressed as a man, and, and they were able to don, uh, like, women's clothing and men's clothing and personas, like, equally um, with each of those. And that's probably why I'm leaning more towards, like, non-binary than actually, like, but, again, I don't speak for the dead, so I can't. Um, but that's, that's such an interesting character. And actually, on our Flag Means Death, the character of Jim was modeled after Mary Reed <laughs> because of that. And the really interesting thing is like some of the, the pieces of actual history um, became incorporated in, in some of our, our pop culture for that. Um, for instance, in the Pirates of the Caribbean, when Elizabeth gets convicted of piracy, she is granted clemency from hanging by claiming pregnancy. And both Anne Bonny and Mary Reed they did the same thing. They said, oh, I'm pregnant. And so they were not hanged for their piracy. Um, and Mary died in prison. Um, and there's really no records after the prison of, of Anne. Um, but, you know, they, they, they didn't die because of of uh of hanging and being convicted of the piracy but again that's one of the reasons why we like we only know of the really really powerful pirates or the ones who were caught uh, because they were caught all right so i've got this half of my necklace made um, i'm going to do for my center of this lower half i'm going to make kind of a bar link with these really cool. I love these beads. They are so cool with this bead and then these two shiny beads on either side. So I'm going to pull out enough 
for that. And since I've got an open link here and an open link here, I'm just going to do closed links on this one so I don't have to remember <laughs> not to. All right, so here we go. Um, and then the last one that I wanted to talk about in my Ooh, yay. Sorry about that. Um, I ran out of disk space. <laughs> I had to clear that out so that I could finish recording. Um, so I was in the middle of saying something um, and then that cut out, but I'm back now. And while I was uh, clearing out disk space, I went ahead and finished creating the links on this second half so that you don't have to do that in front of me. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and, and finish making this little bar across the middle of this. Um, I made a link on one half. I said already that I was going to do a closed link. So I'm going to do a closed link on the other half too, but first we're going to put our beads on here. And bars actually work better on thicker gauge wire, like 18 or 16 gauge, but we're only using 22 gauge for this and that's fine because I'm doing wrapped loops so that, and it's not a very long bar, it's a very, very short bar, so it probably isn't going to be bending due to the weight of the uh, of these. All right, so I'm going to make myself a closed loop on the other end. Bring that all the way around. One nice thing about wrapping your loops is that it it eliminates the wiggle and the jiggle because <laughs> you can you can get it snug. You don't want it too snug, but you can get it snug enough that they're not going to be jangling around too much on these. Sometimes with um, uh, simple loops, I leave too much room between the loops and my beads jangle around a little bit and you know what that's fine sometimes but sometimes you want them to be the loop and not just the beads all right so i've got my little bar with my loops on either end so i'm going to take each of these and slide them through there bloop, bloop, bloop. and wrap these loops all right so i said there was one more pirate that I wanted to talk about and I think that she is the most impressive of all of the lady pirates that I have ever learned about and that was Ching Shi. I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced but um, she was like in the early 1800s she was a pirate in the uh, South China Sea. She started life as a prostitute she was born into it, and then she married a pirate, uh, Ching Yi, and she was on his boat with him and learned everything that she could from him during the six years that they were married. And then after his death, she took over, and she basically had a fleet of 300 ships, and they fought off and pillaged the Portuguese, um, the English, and they did this for like several, several years. And this was like during the time that um, England was like, basically they were drug runners, basically. Like, <laughs> the British East India Com Company were not good people. They were like human trafficking and they were like drug runners and they were bringing ships full of opium to China and stuff. And she was fighting all these guys. So like, I think she was actually kind of a folk hero, but she had really strict codes of conduct for her, her pirates. Like they were not allowed to rape female prisoners. If they did, they were beheaded. Um, <laughs> like those are some of the, the rules that she had, which like, fair enough. Um, I'm down for that. Beheading rapists. That'd be pretty rad. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, it, another thing about her was when she finally surrendered to the Chinese authorities, she went in there with all women guards. It was her and, and her, her women guards, um, no men. And she negotiated her surrender in such a way that all of her crews, like all these people on these 
300 ships, like thousands of, of people, they were allowed to retire basically with dignity because she arranged for them to have um, uh, pensions. So like the Chinese government paid them to stop pirating, <laughs> which is pretty rad because like, who, who else is going to do that? Like, nobody, nobody does that sort of thing. All right, let's get to the rest of my necklace. Now, I'm going to want a length of this in the center. I think I'm going to want it to dip down a little bit, but not too much on there. So that is probably about right. But I want it to be an odd number of skull and crossbones. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 20, 21, 22. Okay, so bloop, that's where we're going to do it. So we'll have 21 of these. And that I just want an odd number so that I have one guy in the middle that I can hang my pendant from, my little cat pendant for that so let me clip this link between these guys hold on i gotta bring it close to me so i can see what i'm doing because if i bring up here where you can see it oh well, maybe actually it'll work up here uh, i think these flush cutters are done or maybe not all right. All right, so that's gonna be around the back of the neck for this length. And this will be the bit in between. I'm gonna grab myself a jump ring and maybe using more jump rings for this I don't know yet we'll find out actually no we will be using jump rings because I'm going to need jump rings to attach the chain to my hoops on either side so I'm gonna need jump ring for my pendant and jump ring for each end of the chain no no I won't need them for that part okay so this will do this will do for now. I'll, I'll bring out some more later if I need them. But now I want to find that middle bit of my my guy. Hold on. All right, so I've got my little hole on this end. And that's going to be what the jump ring goes through. And then I've got on this end, there's a hole there. Let me just clean this bit up here. It's a little bit rough where I clipped it on this end. So I'm going to take this metal file and I am just going to smooth that down. This is what I do to the ends of my ear wires. That's why this is handy. It was already where, where I was gonna use it. All right, there we go. I just don't want any rough bits since this is going to be like hanging on my neck or on my friend's neck if I give it to them. Just don't want any rough bits. You know, we tuck in the ends of our wires in order to not have rough bits or pokey outy bits because nobody wants to wear something that makes them hurt. Okay, so how many of these did I have? I think it was 21. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10. So I should be connecting to this one, but let me just double check that I have 10 on this side too. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. So this is my center. I found it and I'm going to attach my kitty cat to it right now so that I don't have to worry about finding it later. I'm going to do this by putting this jump ring through the mouth on my skull. That jump ring is too thick. It does not fit. I am going to find a different jump ring. I have some smaller jump rings here. Uh -huh. Here we go. So let's see. I need to open this first. It's not already open like these other ones. All right, jump rings open. Now I have to count, counting with Becky. So <laughs> pirate facts and counting. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, And we want the one right next to it. That one. Actually, a good way. <gasps> Wait a minute. Is it? Yes, that's the one. Okay. I mean, I suppose I could hang hang it anywhere off here, but I just want to hang it in the middle. Aha. And that smaller jump ring fit through the mouth. Perfect. All right, now I want this to hang that way for my kitty cat. Let's get this totally closed up. I like to give it a little smoosh to get those ends together. When I close the jump ring. There we go. Now I'm going to attach this to each of these rings. using these jump rings because we want something a little bit larger to go around these hammered loops. All right, all right, here we go. Let's see, and this hole is definitely big enough for that. Hammered loop, we'll close these jump rings. So this part is mostly assembly, now that I have completed this part. And the next part I want to do is uh, hook this loop onto this jumper in here so that whoop, 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 whoop. So it goes like that. All right, but I'm going to, while I've got this jump ring out, attach it to the other loop on this side. Oh man, hammered loops are just great. They're such a versatile component. Can use them as bead frames for wire wrapping. You can add them to things like this. That would actually be a good connector because it's got a top and a bottom. But you know what? I'm not going to add any more to that because it's perfect just the way it is. And so are you. All right. But yeah, when I got this, I was so stoked about it. And I, I'm sorry I haven't like made very much with it yet. I had a lot of things going on. So 
I got the notification that we get the new Magic Mystery Box on Monday. And I am really stoked about that, but it meant that I needed to spend this weekend with my pirate stash, my my bling and make my, my things come to life. Um, so that is what I am doing today. Talking about pirates. I actually have um, my Facebook language set to English parentheses pirate. And it's been set that way for like the last 11 years. Um, my dad used to tell like the worst uh, pirate jokes and puns. Um, I loved them. And this is the wrong way around, I think. Did I do that wrong? I don't want my things to be upside down. I'm going to need to reattach this jump ring, it looks like, because that is twisted around the wrong way. Okay, there's the, there's the opening to it. There, oh, wait a minute. No, it wasn't twisted around the wrong way. I was twisted around the wrong way. That's what it was. It was the loop. That's what was twisted the wrong. All right, all right, all right. So, whew, all right. Got these, got this, got. This end. All right, so this end needs to be attached up here to this corner. Let's open up this loop and slide that on like that. Okay, perfect. Let's let's do some wrapping. Cause this is almost complete. But I am going to do some funky stuff with wire and birds in a minute. With my my parrots, a pair of parrots. That is going to be really cool. Hold on, I'm, I'm going to hold this up to my neck and see how it fits. Oh yeah, it drapes very nicely. I'm sorry you can't see it on, on the camera, but it does drape very nicely on the chest and it is going to be gorgeous and I'm really, really happy with it so far. So now to connect the rest of my necklace with my jazzy clasp, my parrots, my parrot parrots, and this chain for the neck, which I'm just measuring around the back of my neck to see how long I want this chain to be, and I'm gonna have some extra chain, it looks like. So I'm going to cut that. Maybe I can use this with some earrings. Two, three, four, five, six, yeah. I bet I could. All right, now I've got my chain here for the rest of it. And I am going to 
get my parrots attached to these hoops. And then this chain will attach directly to a loop on this parrot. And then I will have an open loop on this side where this clasp can attach to on that side. All right. First things first, let's attach this chain to the clasp using a jump ring. First things first, we do that. Now let's make a perch for Polly. All right, I'm gonna cut a couple of lengths of wire. I'm gonna cut one a little bit longer than the other because I'm going to be making a larger loop with that one. Now I'm going to do basically the same thing for this one where I make a loop on one end and then put it through this. I'm going to leave the loop open before I attach it. So it's open. I can close it when I attach it to the, the other bit. And I'm not straightening it out because I want it to lean a little bit. I don't want it to be straight up and down. Because this way, the parrot can sit better on it. On this side, I want a larger loop for a bale. So I'm gonna bend it about, about a centimeter space between the top of this hole here and that. And then you can either use like the very fattest part of your round nose pliers. If you have uh, six step bale making pliers, you could use like the third one up something like that. Um, if you don't have either of those, you could use, like this is just a, a, a paintbrush that is actually one of the cheap ones that I don't use for anything, but you can bend that around. I'm gonna bend it around twice. Since it's going to be a closure. Now that it is bent around that loop twice, now I can start wrapping it above my parrot. All right, I'm going to attach my little parrot link to my hammered loop before I before I cut this part off because I'm going to want to adjust how my parrot is after I wrap this buddy. Now 
I want to get it attached before I do anything else with it. All right, let's do all the way back there. Oof, I need to get the parrot out of the way so I can clip this. It is a little bit fiddly. That's just what happens. All right, so now I've got my parrot. And it looks like he's perched on the hoop. And those are its, his, uh, his legs. <laughs> All right, so now that he is facing the way I want him to, I'm just going to wrap this. A little more messy, but up against its back to kind of hold him in that location. All right. So I'm going to cut the end. And that's why I waited to cut that off until after I had finished wrapping this loop. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, only it's going to be a much smaller loop here because it's going to be attached to the chain. All right. Now. <laughs> there we go. I'm definitely going to make sh have to make sure these are straightened out before I before I close it, but I will be able to do the closure on this side with my fancy. I mean, why have a closure with like bling on it if you're not going to have it out front where people can see it? I just don't understand. So my blingy closure on that side, my dangly kitty cat, which is terrifying over there. My tropical paradise down here. And then on this side, I'm going to do the same thing with this parrot, but I'm going to do a smaller loop on that side. And that smaller loop is going to be directly attached to the other end of this chain. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make the loop for his perch. And I'm using this again. And I'm not going to straighten it out. You know, you like break the neck of your thing or you make it so it looks like a P. This is going to be more like just a loop because I want it pointing in a certain direction Whoop, like that so I got my little guy let's get my hammered loop on this side And I'm going to start wrapping. Actually, I don't need that on there for this. <laughs> That's just going to be way, way, way too, too weird. And let's see, I think I had three wraps on that side. There we go. Chop that off, tuck in my end. And now,
a bit of a bend this way. I don't need to have a really large loop and I don't need to wrap it twice for this because it's not a closure, it's just a connection. So I am going to wrap it this way so that I can slide the end of this. Uh, now I don't need to straighten this out because I can straighten it out when I clasp it. But I do want it pointing up. My, my Jolly Rogers. And now I'm going to start wrapping. And just with the other one, I'm going to wrap all the way down to the bird so that I can hold it like in a specific uh, position on this link. And that is going to be over here. So <laughs> let's, let's start wrapping uh, downward in that direction. You know what's fun about the word swashbuckle is a buckler is like a little shield that you have on your arm, right? Like it's small, it's mobile, it's something that you can, can have, uh, you know, when you're on a ship and you're fighting close quarters or whatever it is. But to swash your buckler is to beat your sword upon it. So a swashbuckler is someone who beats their sword on their shield. So anybody who has a sword and a shield could be a swashbuckler. Language is fun. All right. There we go. Oh my goodness, I think it's done. I think I've got my, oh, this is fantastic booty. <laughs> That's what the, the mystery box is. It's, it's pirate booty. <laughs> pirate booty. And then... We have our closure on this side. This is fantastic. Thanks for hanging out with me while I played with my pirate booty from <laughs> Jesse Jane's Magic Mystery Box. Like, it's such a great, fun thing to get because you get all of these cool, like, really unique things in a box full of beads and attachments and closures and you can do so many fun and cool things like you could make like 70 billion earrings just with these i made a necklace with them but you can do a lot with them and i'm really excited about the next one like it's usually on a theme like this one was pirates uh, last month was books you guys might have seen some of the the book nerd things that i did with that one um so I'm, I'm excited to see what we get next. It's going to be really fun. Um, they do a good job. It's a lot more economical to uh, subscribe to it rather than purchase them separately. Um, you can purchase it separately. They might still have some of these on their site. Um, not sure if they do. You can check it out. I'll put a link to it in the box. But uh, this was the pirate, uh, the pirate box, and I'm so happy with it. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me while I uh, I uh, recited pirate trivia and uh, have a swashbuckling day. Bye. <laughs>